Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at the topic of traversing the DOM. DOM traversal refers to moving from one node or element to its parent, children, or sibling nodes. Let's start off looking at how to traverse upwards to a parent node. We have the following two options for getting a parent node. Parent node and the newer parent element, which will get only an element node. However, in general, these are probably going to return the same value. Let's take a look at these in action. Notice that I have switched out of JS bin and will be using Atom and Chrome here instead. We have here a basic HTML document with a content area, comment, a little contact section, some more content and a footer outro, and we're linking to an app.js and a style CSS file. Over here in the browser, we could see it in action and we're all set up and ready to look at parent nodes. What we're going to do in our JavaScript is use query selector to get the H1 element. If we look back at our HTML, this will be our H1 right here. Then we're using both parent element and parent node and assigning them each to variables, H1 parent L and H1 parent node. I'll go ahead and comment this one out for later, and let's just go ahead and log these two values in our browser. We could see here in this case that they're both giving us the same thing, which would be our body tag. If we come back into our HTML and look at it, we could see that our H1 is here, and the parent element or the parent node would be body. Notice, however, that when we looked at children, we often saw all of the white space counted as its own node. However, the white space here is not actually the parent of the H1, the body is. This is the reason why using parent element and parent node will often return the same thing, because it's unlikely that you would have an element who has a parent that's not also an element. I want to note too, as I uncomment this line here, and comment out the two above, that it is also possible to chain these together. So if we were to select the H1 and then its parent and then its parent, what do you think we would get? We can see that this returns the HTML element, which makes sense. We have our H1 and then we get its parent and then the parent above it. When it comes to making things like accordions, making things hide, highlighting their parent or wrapper elements, this is going to be super fundamental and helpful when working with selecting elements in the DOM using JavaScript. Now let's turn our attention to working with children nodes. When it comes to traversing to children nodes, we have a number of options that break down into two general types. The first are those that will select nodes of any type. We have here child nodes, first child, and last child. Then we have a set of properties that will only select element nodes. These are children, first element child, last element child, and then the helpful child element count, which will give us a count of all of them. Let's take a look at each of these in action. What we're doing here is starting off with query selector to get the first element that has the content class. If we come into our HTML, we could see that that's going to be this area here where it starts, thanks for joining us, and then has our contact section, or this area here, this whole white section. So we're going to select that, and then we're going to assign a number of variables. We could see that we're getting the children elements using children, the children nodes using child nodes, the first and last child, and then the last and first element childs. Now, when we come into the browser and look at all of these logged, we can see that the children element here is giving us just elements as the result. However, when we select all children nodes, it's giving us blank space as well. The reason for this is because in our original HTML, we have blank space and this is counted as a text node. Notice what happens though when we remove this refresh it in the browser, and we see that first one disappear. Then we could see we have our children nodes, the first and last, and the last and first, 
Again, noticing that text is appearing here because there are spaces and we're getting actual paragraph tags here. Now, if we were to come in again and we remove the white space at the beginning and we remove the white space at the end, like this, and then refresh it, notice that when we log out our children nodes, we're getting the same results back as if we were just selecting element nodes. This is very important to run because imagine what would happen if you were writing code with spaces in your HTML, and then when it gets shipped to production, all of this gets condensed or minified, which is the practice of removing spaces. If you were trying to select just nodes and not focusing specific on the element ones, then you would get completely different results depending just on the changes in your markup. This is important to remember and one of the reasons why we could select specifically just element children so that we don't potentially get thrown off with text nodes that contain nothing but line breaks or empty space. Now that we've looked at selecting children nodes, I want to show you one more thing we could do, which is apply some of the information we have learned in the past specifically how to get the length of an array and how to get the node type. So now when we run our code, we're seeing that the children elements, there are three of them, the nodes, including white space, there are nine. And then when we get our first child node, this is going to be three, which is equal to the node type of text, whereas the child element is going to be equal to one. Again, we could have figured this out by what we saw before. However, this is showing how we could use dot notation to select properties. Remember, node types and lengths are properties of the object or node that we have selected. There is also this last one here that I'll show you that's the same as doing the children L's dot length, but it lets us access it in one property directly on the element itself that we selected earlier so we could see we're getting here the same value as using length. Working with children node is going to be super important if you're ever trying to dynamically update lists or items on the page that are children of a parent container. Now that we've looked at children and parent elements, let's turn our attention to the last section of DOM traversal, which is going to be working with siblings. Our options for selecting sibling nodes or sibling elements are going to be similar to selecting children. We have those that break down into selections that will give us any node type, and these are next sibling and previous sibling, and then we have those that will give us just element nodes. These are going to be our next element sibling as well as previous element sibling. Let's take a look now at these in action. What we are doing here is using get element by ID and passing the value of contact. This inside of our markup is going to find wherever there is ID equal to contact, which will be this little section right here. Then we are doing something very similar to we saw in the last examples. We are simply using the properties that we looked at to assign values to certain variables. We have here the previous and next nodes and then the previous and next elements. I'm also doing something a little bit different with console log here than we did in the past, but it is something that I've mentioned is possible. Rather than writing console log each time we want to log something out, it's possible to pass multiple values to it or parameters separated by a comma. So when we come to our page now and refresh it, we can see that we have our contact previous nodes, which are both going to be text, and then we have our contact previous and next elements, which are going to be the thanks for joining us and I'll get back to you right away. Let's look at our code now in our markup to make sure that this is correct. We have here our contact element, which we selected, and then the element that occurs before that is going to be a P tag, and the element that occurs after also a P tag. However, we do have some spaces here. So let's try removing our spaces and notice that we have a comment and I put this in on purpose just to change things up a bit. And we have our paragraph element. Now when we refresh, instead of getting blank text, we'll get our comment as our previous node and then the paragraph as our next node, which is going to match the next element, but not the previous element. The reason for this is that comments are a node type all of their own. 
They're not element nodes and they're not text nodes. So when we select the previous node, it gives us the option of getting back this comment. However, if we specify just elements, then we're not going to get it. And if we add our white space back in, then it's simply going to show text. Traversing from sibling to sibling is something that's super useful and it completes our look at how we can traverse the DOM. So now let's take a little review before we proceed. To review DOM traversal, first we have the option to select a parent node or a parent element node. In general though, these are going to be the same since most of the time if we select an element, its parent will be another element. However, when it comes to selecting children, we see distinct differences between selecting a generic node of any type and specifying just to get an element node. I'll add here that the selection of element nodes is something newer to the DOM in JavaScript, so you won't see it supported in older browsers. Likewise, when we come to traversing from sibling to sibling or from one element to the next one that shares a parent element, we will also see differences between leaving generic what type of node we want and specifying we want an element node. However, in general, we have to remember that white spaces in our HTML does matter. And for this reason, you might want to lean towards specifying that you want to get element nodes. It may seem a little vague why we are focusing on DOM traversal at this point, but as we get into building out more and more JavaScript in our apps that we'll do later, you'll see that this is an essential fundamental skill to have. So for this reason, I would suggest popping open an average web page and start traversing. Try to select an element and then figure out how to navigate. You can chain these together, selecting a child, selecting parents of parents, children of children, siblings, the next siblings, moving two or three siblings over. And doing this will get you comfortable beginning to move around the DOM using JavaScript. Once you've had a chance to practice and get comfortable with this, move on to the next video where we'll look at getting and setting node values.